You're gonna be just fine. I just talk. You know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining me, as always, is the ever-quotable Jay. This guy was into some weird shit. And that guy he's talking about is the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Yep, I'm here. Woo! And uh, with that, Jay, what have you been up to? Uh, mostly work. I've been playing a lot of Dragon Ball Kakarot uh, on PS4, and then trying to see as many movies as I can that are not getting pushed back. Uh, the Hunt, I saw that. That's horror related. That was really good. Uh, so I'd recommend people see that before it's uh, it finishes its run. That's definitely worth braving the virus. Uh, uh, to for the see. record, Jay, you're diabetic. Quit trying to brave the virus. Uh, you, you know, you I've had die. a good run. You, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you are not going to win this battle. I. That's okay. And Jay's like, I saw The Hunt. My life's good enough. It's done. Yeah, that's, I'm good, man. Uh, and Kenneth, what have you been up to? Uh, mainly just working. Uh, in honor of the coronavirus, I watched Twenty Eight Days Later in the stand. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> Other than that, uh, nothing really. Just working and uh, washing my hands a lot. That's fair. I've uh, been watching that '70s show. I'm in the fifth season now uh, because I just can't concentrate enough to watch a movie. It's really hard to watch movies right now for me. Um, so I've been watching that '70s show. I watched the Little Dicky Dave show. First three episodes, fucking hilarious. Check that show out. Um, My song. daughter got me into a kid's show. Jay what, did. What what show? Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. What the fuck? I've seen that porno. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it's actually, it's on Hulu. It's actually a cute show. Um, she got me into watching that. Yeah. You know, you saying something about some some dick. It made me think about it. Uh, yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, I know when um. Uh, it was the last year before that when the hurricane hit Florida and uh, Reese's mom and little brother Liam came up. Liam got me into watching Gravity Falls, and I like watched that whole series like twice with him. Yeah, it's actually. I mean, some of these kid shows are actually really good. Yeah, I was I was pretty uh, fucking surprised. Um, yeah, so besides that '70s show, I haven't done anything. Woohoo! I played. Um, I don't know. I played a. Uh, Raiden 5 on the PS4, so that was fun. Shooting there you go. shooting the ships. So alright, well fuck it. I think that's done. Uh before we get into craziness, uh let's talk about the fact that uh we got great possible news for Kenneth. Uh Sony PlayStation is teaming up with Konami to not only get a reboot of Silent Hill going, but are possibly trying to fix uh, the relationship with Kojima to get a second Silent Hill game to come out based on what PT was supposed to be. Yeah, that would I'm, be I'm awesome. All, yeah, I mean the 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 ironic thing is is that Jerry and I had had a conversation I don't know a couple of months ago about what it was going to take to get Silent Hills back off the ground the and success that, of uh, Delivery Man the game. I mean, dude, it's, it, I, I am so stoked. I mean, because they're supposed to be coming out with a new movie. You know what I'm saying? They're supposed to be coming out with a... a, a so from what I've heard, they're going to follow in the footsteps of Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2 and try to get, you know, the reboot of the first game going, and they're going to try to make a new game. I mean, fuck yeah. All it took was, a, was another horror survival franchise to goddamn kick everybody in gear. Yeah, I, I mean, I fully put this on Resident Evil 2 Remake, kind of. Yeah, put it was in, good. Putting it on blast, saying, hey, people want this. It sold like fucking hotcakes. Yeah, man. Resident Evil 2, the, the that remake was fucking amazing. It was so good. I played the shit out of it. I loved it. If we go into quarantine, I might play it. You should. It's going to be pretty, pretty uh, sweet. Hey, and if we go into quarantine, y'all may get more podcast episodes just because we're bored. Yeah, there you go. Maybe. I've been looking for a reason to stay home. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, with that said, uh, we are doing two movies tonight. We've got a light one and then a heavy one. Uh, so the first one is one that uh, the people voted for. The people wanted 
and so we're doing it and of course that is from beyond 1986 a group of scientists had developed the resonator a machine which uh, allows whoever is within range to see beyond normal perceptive reality. But when the experiment succeeds, they are immediately attacked by terrible life forms. This is, of course, starring Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, and the lovely Kim Faree. Mm. Love him. Love him. Mm. It's so good. And I have uh, a fun little game for y'all. We have a three-question pop culture trivia game for you two. Okay. Um, I do not expect uh, y'all to get any of these three questions right, but if you do, I will be impressed. Okay. Okay. So, uh, first one. From what movie is Dr. Pretorius' character named after? Anyone. Think deep. The question of where have you heard the name Dr. Pretorius from? Think, think back. You gotta go decades back. You gotta remove the color from the TV screen. You didn't even Is have it, TV uh, screen. Frankenstein. You're you're close. It's not from the first Frankenstein movie. It's from well, I, Bride of Frankenstein. I've never watched any of them, so <laughs> it's from Bride of Frankenstein. I will I'll give you credit for that, Jay. All right, number two, Doctor Block. Blotch, Block, Blotch, I don't know how to say his name, is named after the author who wrote this novel that was later turned into one of the greatest horror films of the 60s. What is the name of that movie slash book? Oh, the 60s? Yes. Oh. Once again, we're looking at... The Exorcist? At... No. It's mm-hmm. not The Exorcist. That would be the 70s. Oh, okay. This film is also considered a proto-slasher. It broke ground with cross-dressing villains. Cross-dressing hmm. villains. It was the first movie psycho? to show a toilet. It is Psycho. Oh. Block is the last name of the author who wrote Psycho. Okay. All right. Last question. The resonator sound effects were used in this famous 1998 song by the rap group Beastie Boys. What is the song title? Intergalactic. Yes, intergalactic. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm proud of y'all y'all did better I than love i it. thought i love that song and i can do it almost perfectly when it comes on wow okay all right well now that those three questions are done let's uh let's get into from beyond um so this is a uh, based off an hp lovecraft book well short story very short story um and basically we have jeffrey combs doing a science experiment with uh dr conk knock bach guy wrote psycho and um to see from beyond and when it works he goes and stops the kinky sex that's going on downstairs to show but things go bad and uh our our doctor is sucked into a world of of pink and purple light which causes his head to get bit off by a monster and causes our uh lovely jeffrey combs to get locked up uh, for being crazy. But luckily for him, Barbara Crampton saves him. And Lord, in the 80s, she saved us all. And hijinks ensue. Now, uh, Kenneth, what did you think of From Beyond? I mean, it was okay. Um, can you hear me okay? I, I had a little bit of technical difficulty just now. So can yes. you hear me okay? Okay, good, 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 good. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, the, the, the practical effects were really, really good. Uh, really slimy. Um, I thought that was I thought that was interesting. I don't remember if there was any kinky sex in the original short story that this is based off of. No, that's completely added. <laughs> okay, I mean, I think they were just looking for another reason to have Barbara Crampton. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, because she's. I was waiting for it the whole there, time I was watching the movie. In I was short like, when are the story t- that I read? There was no females or black guys. It's all just dudes. I was waiting on her to fucking try to get the BBC. I wanted her to get the BBC. I was really hoping I mean, she was straight up. I mean, I was, I was. She wanted I was, it. Yeah, I was waiting for it. I was just like, "Fuck yeah, he's fishing to do some goddamn chicken fucking right there." Yeah, she was already jacking off the kid from Powder. She might as well fuck the black guy too, right? 
but uh but yeah i mean overall it was decent i mean it was it, you know it wasn't no reanimator but it was it, it it was all right i i mean i enjoyed watching it it's one of those movies that you know i like having it in you know i like knowing that i've seen it before because i had never seen it before this um I like knowing that I'd seen it before. It's one of those classic movies that I had heard about and and had a good reputation. It was decent. It was worth watching. I probably won't watch it again, though. It's a good party movie. It's a really good movie to just right. put on in the background to have on. Like, I really like this movie. I, I've seen it um, four or five times. But um, you know, putting it on in the background it, like Hellraiser, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know. With Hellraiser, I think there's more to dive into. I just With this movie, there's there's... Not as much to dive into, and it didn't really occur to me until I had to sit down and watch it as a podcast. And I was just like, wow, there's really not much for me to say. Like, I I, I don't know. I like the transition when they threw up and it went to Barbara Crampton cooking eggs. That was kind of cool. I, I wish they would have <laughs> done more into this whole, the pineal, pineal, how do you say it? Pineal gland? Yeah. Piney the only penis thing- gland. The he only thing like, that I was thinking about is that the same gland that the fucking satanic drug that got into that uh, goddamn Hunter Thompson, Johnny Depp is Hunter Thompson and fucking Fear and Loathing. Is that the same gland? I think so. But I just like how they talked about it being linked to schizophrenia. And I wish they would have actually went more into that. I was kind of really interested in like Barbara Crampton as a doctor and what she was doing. And we just didn't get that. I mean, the movie basically just comes down to. Two things. It comes down to two questions. One, how does Jeffrey Combs look the same but different in every movie? I don't That's understand acting. this. True. <laughs> no, but yeah. like facial structure. He looks the same yet different. I mean, it's kind of odd that he had, a, you know, in this movie there was a penis coming out of his head. Well, you know, we're always talking about how we want to add more vaginas to women. Maybe it's time we started adding more penises to men. Yeah, I, I suppose. You know? Um, but it basically comes down to, in the pursuit of knowledge, how much are, are we willing to risk? Is it worth the sacrifice? That's what this movie uh, comes down to. I think it depends. I mean, because in this type of situation, the only perspective that we really got for the pursuit of knowledge from this is... Okay, number one, that never really explained, at least I don't think so. If I if I didn't catch it, feel free to tell me. But it never seemed like they really explained the whole thing about why he was trying to eat brains. And no, number did two, not explain that. Right. And then you never really got the perspective of somebody that was actually in the pursuit of knowledge versus the pursuit of I guess uh pleasure. Because to me, you know, the 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 one guy, the sadist, he he seemed like he was more of a he was more into the pursuit of the pleasure based on based on some type of knowledge the 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 how the 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 sixth sense would would enhance his his, yeah. his flesh. He someone really should have just given him the puzzle box and let him meet Pinhead. Exactly. There I mean, I mean, when it really comes down to it, that's actually what I was thinking at the beginning of this when the, when the whole thing got started is I was just like, well, this kind of reminds me of Frank. Yes, and I love his quote. Um, in another life, I would have enjoyed you in another way. <laughs> um, but for Barbara Crampton, it really is her like willing to risk everything for knowledge be, not necessarily out of selfishness but because she she mentioned she's lo- I think she said she lost her father due to schizophrenia um and so she wants to basically cure schizophrenia it's the same fucking storyline we see in all these movies where someone has cancer and they want to get rid of cancer uh out of their parent who died and save the world so they then start you know, genetically experimenting on sharks who who take over a underwater industrial complex. <laughs> we see this all the time. Um, Straight up. But it kind of comes down to that. But this this movie, story wise, isn't really who gives a shit. It's it's all about the effects. Um, and they are great. The fucking worm thing that like eats all of uh, his hair and shirt. When he's in the basement, 
man, that thing was fucking awesome. I don't get why it only ate cotton and hair and not his skin. But, you know, whatever. I don't think it had, a, like... I don't, had enough time? <clears throat> yeah, there wasn't enough time for it to start digesting the rest of him. Maybe. That, that definitely could get it. I, I mean... Uh, there's uh, Jay, what did you think about this movie? We haven't gotten to you. Uh, so this is the first time I've ever watched it. And I thought the effects were really good. Um, but that's really the only thing it has going for it. Like, I mean, okay, so the acting was fine. It wasn't, like, bad. But it was just... There was not much substance other than the cool effects is kind of how I felt. Uh, so I don't, I'm not in a rush to own it. And I'm not in a rush to rewatch it. But it was cool to see you know, those practical effects. Definitely. Um, like when uh, Ken Faree's character gets his fucking body eaten. Holy shit, that looked grimy. Oh, no. That kind of reminded me of the blob a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it, ugh, that, yeah, this movie really comes down to just having amazing special effects and a, a pretty weak story it's interesting but it's it's very much on the surface level and i find with like a lot of hp lovecraft adaptations a lot of them for some reason for something that's supposed to be like so cerebral they really only cover like the surface like aesthetically it looks great but they just can't do the story justice and i'm not going to spoil anything but I say this ever after having just watched uh, Color Out of Space. and, and The having, Void. The Void does it right. The Void does it right. That has a lot of emotional depth. But The, the Void is, is influenced by Lovecraft. It's not adapted from Lovecraft. Oh, no, I know. I'm just saying it's a Lovecraftian That, But I don't want to talk movie. about that because like you can do John Carpenter's The Thing. You can do Stephen King's It. Influenced Lovecraft is, movie-wise, is better than... Lovecraft adaptation when it comes to movie. Like, I don't know what it is, but everything I've watched that's an adaptation of Lovecraft, it never seems to get deep into, like, the actual madness of of what any of this fucking is. Um, I don't know, man. I really like the Necronomicon. (laughs) They put out that movie. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I haven't seen it. Say what? I haven't seen it. I said I haven't seen it. Yeah, you ought to check that one out. That one was actually pretty good. Does it have depth is more than just the surface? Yeah, but you but I I think the only way that you'd be able to get it is to download it. That's fine. I don't give a shit. Seeing ninety nine bottles of rum on the wall. Yeah, but you should check it out. I, I mean, that one's pretty good. It's an anthology. Okay, yeah, I have to check that one out. I also need to check out um, Dagon, um, yeah. which was the other one that they teamed up for. Uh, besides Reanimator, like yeah, Reanimator's great, but re like it also it still doesn't have like crazy depth, but it does have more intriguing characters. Yeah, Dagon was good. You should check out one. Okay, I need to check out Dagon. I think I've seen that one. I haven't seen it. It's one that I, I need to uh, check out. So I, I um, see if I've seen it. Based <laughs> off a uh, suggestion from from Kenneth when we were talking about an episode that we're uh, that I'm working on, uh, he had another idea that we thought we would bring up, and I just wanted to read y'all some of uh, the the really low ratings off Rotten Tomatoes for this movie. Now these are user submitted reviews, not professional critics, but I wanted to bring a couple of these up. Christina B. on September 5th, 2013 gave this movie a half star. Lovecraft is spinning in his grave. This movie pissed me off for lack of better terms. As an avid fan of Lovecraft, I have yet to watch any film that's done Lovecraft's work any justice, but this is just a fucking abomination. I'm not sure why this earned such positive reviews. It wasn't scary, it wasn't funny, and don't even get me started on how they disgraced the story. I guess it's because Stuart Gardner obviously didn't take his project seriously, therefore precluding him from the scrutiny that more ambitious and sincere directors would have received. I watched this movie with lowered expectations, but nothing could have prepared me for the disappointment. 
I'm not sure whether I was watching an adaptation of Lovecraft story or a porn parody. I guess if you're immature, this is the right kind of movie for you. I suspect that Barbara Crampton is only ever cast in movies for two reasons, and neither one of them has to do with her acting. When she's not (laughs) flailing around screaming, she's enraptured by orgasmic ecstasy, and that's about the extent of her throwaway role. There's one scene that is such a ridiculous stretch of imagination which reveals Gordon's maturity. A woman is heard screaming upstairs, and when they search the house for the source of said screaming, they discover that it's a porno. Everything from that moment on is a little more than a springboard for Stuart Gordon's purient obsessions. Even offering only mediocre gore, this film has stripped the original story of everything that made it as good as it was and transformed it into a character of a former self. The tension in the atmosphere? Gone. The scares? gone sympathetic characters were lacking with the exception of Bubba I wanted the entire cast to just die already Lovecraft tales were always effective without him ever needing to rely on gratuity he never needed to resort to a trashy love story subplot and sex to turn pages but the directors resorted to the lowest denominator film looking in filmmaking to exploit this spooky classic I'm no prude, but this film made me want to take a shower. It was icky and exploitative. The end. Wow. Um, while I agree there is no sex or uh, dealing with the sexuality that I can recall from the short story, uh, and this movie definitely has more of a uh, Clive Barker's approach to sex to it, um, I really don't see it as like, Uh, exploitative as they're trying to make it seem like there is literally besides the porno tape one scene of sexuality that they do explain earlier in the movie with the pineal gland like controlling uh sexual conduct or something so i I thought that was kind of weird obviously this person probably hates everything that that has come to film for hp lovecraft because nothing's going to live up to the the god of of naming cats racist names uh-huh. uh in her eyes but it, like i i see ones like that and i'm just like at least they went into it and not like darren h who in 2013 gave it one star who said the more i watched the least since the film made not even the badly dated gore makeup and special effects can save it what makeup effects were you looking at? The makeup effects are fucking wonderful. Yeah, that's that's the saving grace of the movie. Yeah, like I really didn't get it. And people like to hark on this. Another one uh, from 2013 by Mark W. who gave it two stars said, I just didn't really enjoy this at all. And I don't really understand the high praise that it received. The biggest problem with the whole movie is it's simply not very interesting. I can look past the rubber costumes... And crazy makeup jobs because I've seen the worst of the worst of wardrobe choices. But the film just felt so bland and for a full moon style production, it seemingly fits in well on the majority of their catalog. If you understand that it's a full moon style movie, what did you come in thinking it was going to be like compared to a lot of other full moon movies? This is actually really good. This was a full moon movie? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yep. I didn't even know. <laughs> didn't yeah, either. this is this is Charles Band producing. Interesting. But I and I just, just don't get where he's like I can uh, get over the rubber costumes and crazy makeup jobs because I've seen the worst wardrobe choices ever. What the fuck do those two have to do with each other? People are just. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think I, anytime I read any of the reviews off Rotten Tomatoes, I think people get on there just to troll because, damn, sometimes they they put on here, I mean, just movies that are absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I'm not saying that this movie is absolutely fantastic, but it's not absolutely horrible either. It's a decent movie. It's it's worth a watch, you know. But just unfortunately, <clears throat> that's what I do. I think people just get on there to fucking rag on shit. You know, and when it really comes down to it, I kind of agree in certain instances where a lot of H.P. Lovecraft movies are not movies that are directly based off some of his works are not as good as I think they could be. 
You know, I agree with that. But at the same time, I mean, this is not the most horrible movie I've ever seen. You know, for me, I think one of the biggest things that I didn't like about the the makeup effects is I always think that when it comes to uh, in instances like this where there's so many practical effects, things that are flesh colored and slimy looking are I, 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 they always come out looking plasticky. And I think that's one of the things that I don't really like about things that are flesh colored like that. You know, like the the main guy, you know, because his, his whole thing was was that way. And so I think in that instance, I don't particularly care for it. But at the same time, I'll give credit where credit's due. The makeup guys did a great job in this movie. Yeah, it's almost like um, movies like to use H.P. Lovecraft names. Uh, kind of like how we used to do that to Edgar Allan Poe with movies. Right. Like how Roger Corman just threw Edgar Allan Poe shit on stuff and it had nothing to do with Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people love to compare this movie to Reanimator. I saw so many compares. Like, uh, I think that's it, just because of the team. Yeah, pretty much. Cause that, like, but it doesn't quite repeat the success with which Reanimator contemporized a piece of century-old literature that was much more of its time. Or, I love Lovecraft. I love... I like Reanimator. I even like Jeffrey Combs, but this has to be the worst movie I've ever seen in terms of directing and acting. At least the second half of the movie with its crazy gore fest kind of rehabilitates that the whole thing. It's fun, but cheap and not credible or immersive for one second, especially compared to Reanimator. You know, like, it, and weird is also like, I found this review that's two stars, which you would think be negative, but they go absolutely ludicrous movie can't believe lovecraft actually wrote this and can't believe i never watched it in 10 till now anything jeffrey combs does is brilliant though well i think the reason why people end up comparing this movie to reanimator is because like jay said the team i mean you've got uh jeffrey combs and barbara crampton both in this movie you know and and when it really comes down to it, the it, it's still kind of got the same sort of premise to it, sort of, where you've got uh, a guy working for another doctor or another scientist or something like that, and that scientist has figured out some real crazy shit and so on and so forth. And Reanimator and this kind of both go along those same lines at the beginning until obviously, you know, you get... You get further in, and they go in two totally different two totally different directions. As for, you know, uh, the main basis of the work of the science, but other than that, I mean, you got uh, a fucking a guy that's working underneath a scientist. The scientist figures out some kind of crazy shit. In this case, it's you know the merging of dimensions, I guess, for lack of a better term. And in the other one, it's how to fucking reanimate a corpse. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it, and it kind of works in the same fashion, you know, so to speak. So I can see where the comparison comes from. Hell, I even did it. Yeah. I got a question for you. When it comes to movies like this, do you prefer if they try to explain stuff with like heavy pseudoscience versus just not explaining to you at all? Because I know for me, like when, like when I talked about how I wish they would have went more in the pineal gland and the schizophrenia connection or even understanding how they reached this other dimension, this so-called the beyond or what the fuck it was like, like more of an explanation of that stuff. Or you, would you rather not have to deal with that kind of ridiculousness and just enjoy, uh, whatever they're presenting you? Well, I mean, with me being the type of person that I am, I actually kind of like to get into the science of shit. You know, I like to know how the, how, you know, how the things are done or whatever. Like I think in this movie in, in from beyond, it was more of a, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot of explanation at all other than they were just there. You know, they were, they were lingering around at the same time as us. That's the reason why I say it's kind of like, in my opinion, it's kind of like a merging of dimensions, you know, because like the only thing, only explanation that's really given is that they're always around us. It's just they can't see us and we can't see them. But, you know, once they get this vibration going from this from these times, then they can, you know, they have the ability to see us and vice versa, which I think is odd. And that's about as far as it went, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, that that is. I, I really would like to have more of an explanation of things because I'm with you. I, I, I'd rather have the fake science 
than no explanation at all. I want more because that's the, that I agree. Like the biggest problem with this movie is it doesn't have it doesn't lean on its story at all. The story is there just to prop up the special effects, which are great, but that also comes down to how long can I sit here and go, yeah, fucking Dr. Knockcock, corny sadist dude, his monster effects were fucking dope as shit, but I, I, like, movie. I liked watching Jeffrey Combs suck out eyeballs. Um, Yeah, I prefer... I don't care if the science that's explained is completely fictional um, with no basis in real life, as long as it explains, you know, here's the reason why in our world this happens. I don't care if it's realistic after that. They could be like, the eyes are actually the window of the soul, and if you focus, you can fly through them. Cool. I don't give a shit. That's your explanation. That works for me. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. You know, as long as there's something there. Uh, fortunately enough though, a lot of times damn shit is really based in real science. So it's like, you know, even, even if it's only a shred, I kind of like that too, but I get it. I completely agree with you. As long as there's some form of explanation, there's only a few movies that I've ever seen where in that, because it, because most of the time they end up turning out to be a franchise, but I, I, there's only a few times where I've watched the movie and I've actually liked the fact that we don't get any kind of information or any history of it. Like the first Jeepers Creepers, I like the fact that you really don't get a whole lot of backstory on the creeper. Right. Just you know enough to know that it's a thing that yeah. exists. And Did you bring that up because I, I talked about powder earlier? <laughs> actually, I really didn't even think about that and put it together. But now maybe subconsciously, yes. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Um, so yeah, uh, basically guys, uh, we kind of talked and was like, okay, we're still going to do from beyond, but there's really not that much to talk about. So I, uh, got recommended a fucking bomb on us. I, okay. Well, it's not okay. So I had called my dad and I was like, Hey, can you get a copy, an HD copy of uh, color from outer space on the Plex? Um, so that I can watch it. Uh, and he was like, yeah, I will. Um, by the way, you need to watch this movie. I see you. He was like, it's kind of more of a thriller. Um, and it, it, but you need to, it's from 2019. You really need to watch it. And I'm like, okay, you you know what? I don't have anything to watch right now. It's going to take you a little bit to get this movie on there for me. So fuck it. I'll watch that. And, uh, he goes, I don't want to tell you anything about this movie, but, um, yes, that's Helen Hunt. And I'm like, (laughs) Okay. Then I saw the movie and I was like, holy fuck. What the fuck happened to Helen Hunt? Yeah, that filter that they were using didn't work with a fuck. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird Snapchat filter. She yeah. got real smoothed out. Okay, but before we get into this movie. Okay. Uh, this movie is I See You from 2019. There are two movies from 2019 called I See You. This is the one with Helen Hunt. That's important. Second of all, if you have not seen this movie... Stop listening to the podcast now. Uh, This is, and don't go IMDB this movie. Don't go watch a trailer on YouTube. Do nothing. Go watch this fucking movie. Just watch it. Go in blind. Uh, Yes. It is, it is so worth it. We all went into this movie blind. We all knew nothing about this movie. Um, And it's fucking amazing. And I called the guys and I was like, hey. I know what our next podcast is going to be. It's going to be I See You because it's so fucking good. And then when From Beyond was kind of weak, uh, as for a discussion topic, we were just like, okay, let's double feature and do I See You. Um, so that's that's what we're doing. So if you haven't seen the movie, go see it because not only are we going to spoil this movie, but when I say this is a movie you don't want spoiled, that this is a movie you want to watch and watch is going in knowing nothing and just pay really close attention to what's going on. I fucking mean it. This movie blew me the fuck away. Yeah. No trailers, no nothing. Just Just make sure when you get on there, look for the one and it says Helen Hunt in the cast to get it and watch it. Cause I was just like, there was definitely a couple of times when I was watching it where I was just like, Holy fuck. I didn't see that coming. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> so, 
we are about to get into it. It was a first time watch for all three of us. I actually watched it uh, for a second time today. And um, I, even the second time, I caught so much more shit that I didn't catch the first time. And I paid a lot of attention the first time and thought I caught a lot of stuff. But so, there's yeah. a, there's some subtle stuff that I caught in the second watch that holy shit. So yeah. we're we're gonna get into this. Uh, so you can full rent fucking it spoilers. For six bucks on Amazon. Yeah, or to, if you're broke as shit it. because of the coronavirus, I'm not saying slide in my DMs, but maybe slide in my DMs. You know, maybe maybe buy your feet pictures. Maybe kill the <laughs> cast has got you. All I'm saying, but you know, yeah, go watch this movie. Um, so okay, Whew, I don't even uh, know where to start with this movie. Um, oh, yeah, Comcast giving away free internet. Fuck yeah. Kill the cast is for the quarantined. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we are here for people that are affected by the coronavirus by helping spreading the love of just a great fucking movie. Slide in these DMs. Get you a double pack of this and maybe Alligator from 1980. We'll hook you up. We got Straight you, baby. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. All right. <laughs> um... Fuck, man. Uh, I gotta figure out how, where to even... T- okay, so... This movie... From 2019. Strange occurrences plague a small-town detective and his family as he investigates the disappearance of a young boy. Alright, full spoilers, guys. I'm about to give my my paragraph here. Uh, the way <laughs> the first half of this movie sets it up as a paranormal flick... And then flips it on you with a twist in the middle of the movie is amazing. Most movies wait till the end to hit you with that M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, But this one has the balls to do it in the middle. And then at the end of the movie, you get another twist. But that twist is more about like you having the ability to put the puzzle pieces together. Because the movie did a good fucking job of giving you small bits of info through the entire movie. When I first watched this movie, I literally put together the ending right before they fucking said it. Like, literally five seconds, and then they said it, and I was like, that was wait, wait, perfect timing. The ending ending or the mid-movie twist? Uh, the, the ending ending, the puzzle okay. pieces. The mid-movie twist, never saw that coming. Who, Me that, either. That was fucking <laughs> crazy. But that's what I'm saying. Like, the mid-movie twist is amazing, and the end-movie twist is less of a twist and more of your ability uh, to put together puzzle pieces. And if you haven't put it together by then... I did not call it. I I called it, it but it was like five seconds beforehand. I did not call it. I thought it was simply uh, right place or, you know, wrong place, right time kind of situation. Like, okay... This guy's fucked up, but I guess he's not as fucked up as this guy. But nope, there's a whole reason to everything from the get-go. Yeah, it kind of came to me, like, right at the end of it. I was just like, I was like, I bet he's one of them two fucking kids. Yeah, because they do little things. He was there on purpose. Because, like, I I remember her saying at the beginning of it that he was the one that picked out the house. Yes, that's very important. When they go, when they, uh, when um, fucking uh, Spitsky and uh, Greg... Uh, talk about going and interviewing the two surviving kids. They only go and see one kid, right? And that kid freaks out when he sees. The, you didn't realize that's why he was freaking out, but he freaks out when he sees the uh, the when white. He sees detective. Greg. Yeah, Greg. I'm so bad with the names. I just I literally just finished watching this before we got on, and I'm so bad with fucking yeah. names. <laughs> so Greg is the father. He's the detective. Um, in this house. Uh, his, his, we have his wife played by uh, Snapchat filter Helen Hunt. Um, and she recently cheated on her husband, which pisses her, her son Connor off a fucking lot. He He's very upset about it. Um, so they have, we start this movie off with this kid riding a bike and he gets fucking forced pushed off his bike. It looks very paranormal. It did so well, man. Um, and then, like, early on in the movie, uh, something I noticed in the second time, that um, flower pot mug, that sunflower mug, uh-huh. is everywhere in this movie. Helen brings it up in the very, like, first scene of her. She's like, where the fuck is my mug? Right, uh, right. 
And, and, and like, later on when it jumps to the footage of the kids who are frogging the house, it the first thing, you see that mug in the, in the cabinet. Um, okay, guys, this movie, because it has two timelines, it's kind of hard to do it, but we're going to try to get into this. Um, so, first timeline is just uh, Greg and, and Jackie and Connor, and they're in their house, and all these weird things start happening. Like, uh, Greg gets pissed because he, uh, Jackie calls him, and he throws his phone, and it breaks a window. And when he goes out there, he sees a sunflower cup on the roof. Um, you know, this is just kind of building up to showing that he's got anger problems with his wife cheating. Um, and then this did, this movie also did the greatest thing it could do for, for, uh, Helen Hunt. Jackie takes pills this entire movie, which explains her shitty acting. Uh, I just want to point that out. Oh, so then the movie gets into very common, like ghost tricks. Uh, like out of nowhere, all the silverware is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, when the repair man comes to fix the broken window and Jackie gets scared by him, the repair man says to the girl that their daughter let him in, but they don't have a daughter. Classic fucking goat ghost move. <laughs> I love goat movies. <laughs> Classic goat movie. The fucking goat has a daughter. Goat did it. <laughs> no clickety clackety here. Um, <laughs> And then, like, we jump to them walking the working the case where we find out more about this uh, child killer who killed six boys and left a green Swiss Army knife there, and that and they had locked him up. And all this is very important to all the information they're giving you. Um, and they find out the missing kid on this new case. Well, they found the same style knife at the scene of the crime, and this is very very important. Then we go to Claire doing the dishes. After having a very, very bad dinner with her son, who son's like, why are you fucking the repairman? <laughs> um, I mean, just straight up. <laughs> yeah, where the TV keeps turning on. Uh, then throughout the movie, we slowly notice pictures missing from the frames on the staircase wall. Also, very ghost-like. Uh, a gerbil or a hamster, I'm not sure which one. I don't work at PetSmart. I'm not an expert. Um, I tried to call Richard Greer because I knew he could tell me. Couldn't get him on the line. So, what can I do? But he gets out of his cage, leads Greg to a closet, and then that door gets shut and he can't open. And he can even kind of see someone between the cracks. Fucking super ghost-like. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the craziest scenes in the movies that you realize later is crazy uh, is where Jackie wakes up and goes into her son's room. He isn't there. His PC's on. He's playing video games. Uh, I don't know, Fortnite or Overwatch, Overwatch. or something. Overwatch. He's playing Overwatch. Playing Overwatch. Okay. <laughs> I play Overwatch, so I was like, hey, Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. And there's a point where she looks under the bed, and she just sees this, like, weird-looking thing under the bed, which at first, when I first watched this movie, I was like, what the fuck was that? Like, I just legit had no idea. Yeah, I thought I missed something, but I rewound. I was like, oh, okay, you just, what is she seeing? It was like, a, to me, it was just like, it looked like it, there was some kind of toy or something under the bed. That's what I thought, but I was like, why are they focusing on this? I don't know. And at this point, I still think everything's paranormal. Um, So then we see the covers being dragged off Greg, uh, and he wakes up with piss all over himself. Once again, super fucking ghost. So at this point, um, we get more information um, about the kidnappings and shit that's going on. Uh, we find out there are two boys who survived the killings from five years ago. They go and visit one of the kids. Just one. That kid is fucked up. Uh, Tommy fucked up his face after uh, the house in the trees. But that house in the trees disappears. And... Um, I also wrote, because I did not catch this the first time like Jay did, I wrote, the reason. The, I just realized the reason why the kid is screaming is not because of being confronted by the case, but is because he actually sees Greg. I did not put that together my first view. I only uh, got it when the, end, when the end was revealed. It's not like I figured it out I, while it didn't, was happening. It did not occur to me until the second watch. Oh, okay. So, like, I didn't even put it together afterwards. Yeah, it didn't occur to me until y'all said something. Yeah. 
So then Jackie's lover, who she cheated on her husband with, shows up at the house. That same sunflower mug hits him in the head from the roof where Jackie can see a window open. Um, She takes him to the basement where he gets a call from his phone. And it's coming from inside the house. (laughs) And uh, she can hear music. um, Well, at this point... At this point, right here, I was, I, I was just like, okay, I stopped thinking the paranormal shit and was starting to think that it was her son. Like, and, and, and I mean, when it really comes down to it at this point, you know, all right, number one, the dad had already fig- had, had already seen the cup sitting outside once. You know what I'm saying? And it had like cigarette butts in it. So, you know, pissed off kid, fucking being rebellious, sitting out on the, uh, sitting out on the roof when parents aren't paying attention, smoking. You know what I'm saying? That, I mean, a typical trope. And then later on, you know, is she she makes it clear that her son is there. And then the fucking mug, you know, she probably wouldn't even have noticed him sitting up there smoking. You know what I'm saying? And so while he was sitting up there smoking, yeah, he was sitting up there smoking or something like that. She they, she went outside to fucking you know uh, see her see her ex lover, and he got pissed off about it and slung that fucking cup down there. At this point, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I, for that instant, I did too. Uh, but I, like, it wasn't until the next scene where we cut back to the affair guy in the basement and he gets hit in the back of the head, uh, but we don't know from who. And this is where I'm like, oh, this is the first mysterious thing that happened that I do not think is a ghost. Which is very important because literally uh, right after this, we get the discovery that the missing kid, Justin, was flung from his bike from a wire that was tied to two trees. So right. right after we get the actual first fully shown no su- non-supernatural scare in the movie, we immediately get an explanation of the first supernatural event in the movie. Yeah, this is when it starts breaking it down. So now it's not. we know that it's not supernatural yeah. anymore. So now what the fuck is going on? Like, because the, the cup falling off... That was kind of like, okay, maybe it was a son or something, but we still don't know. But when the dude gets hit with the bat, at that point, you're like, oh, no, something else. What the fuck's going on? This is not supernatural. That was at least not supernatural. And then literally right after that, we get the explanation of the very first quote-unquote supernatural thing in the movie. That was just beautiful of the movie to do. I just fucking loved it um then we go in there and jackie shows uh greg the body and tells him she thinks connor did it they go in the woods to bury the body while they're gone connor gets home he finds uh that uh all the silverware is being dried in a sheet in the dryer and then he gets a message while playing a game asking him if he knows what frogging is as he googles what it means we see someone behind him we see the person and we see the mask that we saw under the bed earlier in the movie now Kenneth, did you know what frogging was before this movie? I did not, and and I, I, you know once uh the when when you saw him googling it, I actually got on my phone, and I looked it up, and I was just like, okay, because immediately I was like, is this just something for the movie? And then I looked it up, and then when I looked it up, I was like, holy shit! I was like, that's a real fucking thing, and we actually know that people have done that. Yeah, there is straight up video footage. I, I remember a couple of years ago that was that there's that famous footage of the woman who uh was in a uh, like crawl space in the kitchen and she would she like came out, she pissed in the sink, uh drank milk straight from the carton, uh and then she went on the couch and then had to hide behind the couch as the guy who lived there came out to get a drink from his fridge. She was mere fucking feet away from him right like this is a real fucking thing jay did you know that it was a real thing uh i did not know the term i know that it is a thing that has happened before i also googled it (laughs) okay so i so i knew what it was so as soon as they said frogging on the screen i was like oh shit really because i'm deathly afraid of frogging i think it's fucking terrifying that someone could be living in your house and you not know it. Yeah, um, that's fucked up. I, I agree. Uh, that scares the living shit out of me. So as soon as that popped up on the screen, I said, oh, fuck, I know what's going on. Um, and Once it, he Googled it, I had that revelation. Yeah, I knew it as soon as they, they said frogging on the screen. 
um, I was like, oh shit, someone's in the house. And then, of course, the mask guy comes up. But at this point, I thought, oh, maybe this is the person kidnapping the kids and he's fucking with the lead detective. Um, well, no, this movie's better than that. This movie doesn't go for your simple tropes. Um, at this point, uh, Greg and Jackie come home and Jackie discovers Connor's body in the tub. He's tied up, duct taped on the mouth, and has a green knife stuck in a bar of soap. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Um, at yeah. this point, oh, do you have something to say? Yeah, I was just going to say, I was like, holy. When I saw that, I was like, man, what the fuck? Where is this going? I was just like, is this is, is this like a copycat? Because they said, you know, obviously they were talking about the killer being in prison. I was like, is this a copycat? Did that motherfucker get out? I was like, what the fuck is going on? And they just, and at this point, you think that, you know, it was one of the cops that put him away or something like that. And that, and that, you know, the this the guy that may be in jail is, you know, uh, getting somebody else to fuck with this cop or some other shit. I was like, I was reeling with all kinds of shit in my head at this point. Yeah. Um. So then we have our last scene in the first narrative, which is Spitsky is told that they got a call about someone seeing the kidnapper and they are tracking the cell. Greg isn't picking up his phone, so Spitsky is on his way to his house. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, we then find we then see uh, Greg walking around the house, seeing the missing photos that are now cut up on Connor's wall. He's walking around the house with a gun. The music starts playing, and as Greg searches the house with his gun drawn, we see the frog mask follow him and swing at him with an axe. Then the movie cuts to the second narrative, which takes dun, us dun, dun. all the way back to the beginning of the movie. Um, before that first, um, uh, like pancake bref- breakfast where we meet the family. So this Which is like, I thought was the next day until a few minutes afterwards. Yeah. It took me my second time to watch to clearly like put a coat pin in how this timeline works, but I'm pretty sure that this takes place the day before where this movie started. Yeah, it does. I just, it took me a second to realize that's what we were doing. Yeah. So, um, uh, we see, uh, someone filming the house and as, um, I'm guessing it's Jackie leaving the house. A girl runs into the garage with someone filming her and following her. Uh, they get into the house. The cameraman opens up a cabinet and sees the sunflower cup. I like that. Uh, this girl is Mindy, and she is making up. She is making a documentary about professional frogging. We also see the cameraman show up, and he's wearing the frog mask. His name is Alec. Now we're starting to put shit together. Now we know what that frog mask for sure fucking is uh, that we saw under the bed. And the scariest part about that is, you know, right when I realized that, I was like, oh, my God, how fucked up is that to know that that motherfucker was damn lying up underneath that bed when the mom was right there. I was just like, holy shit. Oh, my God, it's fucked up. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't I don't like it. It, Ugh. Yeah, that's Ugh, that, that right out. there. Like after watching this movie, you know, there's only two, or, uh, two doors into my bedroom, and both of them are gonna have those bell things on top of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, like what's like what's in a fucking uh, a store when you walk in and the bell rings. I'm gonna have one of those little things on top yeah. of both doors. Will you think about it? Uh, like Kenneth, think about both of y'all. Y'all saw how big my dad's house is, right? Yeah. yeah. If it wasn't for the dogs, spe- uh, specifically Tinker. It would be easy as fuck for someone to live in that house and, like, never be noticed. Oh, yeah. Like, it would be very fucking... Because there there is an attic. There's a place in the basement behind the bar before you get into, like, that back room. Uh, like, Michael Myers was covering it up on that one side that you go through. Yeah. Someone could easily go in behind there and just not be fucking seen. Because all that's back there... Is like mostly like fucking a wall of DVDs. Well, I've got a habit of going through my house and checking my house every day when I get home. Anyway, 
but the attic thing is the one that gets because like the basement door we keep the basement door locked locked from inside the rest of the house so if somebody were to break in through the basement and come up the stairs that door is solid oak and so the only way you'd be able to get through it is you'd have to chop your way through it yeah it's just fucking creepy um yeah so so we see go ahead i was going to say so like in, in in the house here the attic you know what I'm saying? All there is, like, you have to have a ladder to get up into the attic because the attic here is more like a ventilation space than anything. It's not a storage space. So to get up in the attic here, there's it doesn't have its own ladder. You actually have to put a ladder up in the hall to get up in the attic here. Yeah. Watching this movie makes me glad I live in a small apartment. Right? That's that's how I feel. That's um, fair. I'm going to figure out how to get in your apartment. I'm going to slip in and scare the shit out of you one day. Nope, I'll know if I come in the house and Buttercup is not where I can see her, that means she's hiding under the bed and someone is in this house who should not be here. Oh, I like your little alarm system. She don't, she don't, like, my buddy Jimmy was over Friday, uh, my buddy Jimmy and Dave, uh, Dave's the guy that, uh, was in the Jason costume we interviewed, um, at Days of the Dead, Jay. Um, but they were over and literally every time, because Jimmy comes over like almost every Friday, they, the, that cat does not come out from under the bed. She doesn't come out to poop. She doesn't come out to pee. She don't come out to eat. She don't come out to drink. She refuses to come out. She don't like motherfuckers. So if I can't see her, if she's not coming up to me like, Hey, give me some fucking wet food. Something's wrong. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And I'm making a call and I'm having my stepdad show up with an AR-15. That's all I'm saying. Um, so anyway, we see Alec uh, breaking the rules and going into the house at night when everyone is sleeping. Uh, and even, even going into the rooms where they are fucking sleeping. And it creeps me the fuck out. It this is, is where the creepy. movie is just so creepy. Uh, um, so after... Then we see... Uh, the scene where Greg breaks that uh, window, and so he comes up into the spare bedroom uh, where they have to hide uh, so he can get the coffee mug, um, and they decide that they're going to hide stuff in the basement. Um, Alex shows her that he can control their TV from an app and their Wi-Fi. So we've had explanation. Ex- an expl- he stole the silverware. He's turning on the TV. He's taking the fucking pictures. Like, all that supernatural stuff is now being explained. Um, we also find out that she is, that Mindy is the one that let the repairman in after the broken window because they were down there when the doorbell rang. Uh, we also see Alex steal pills from Greg, which I'm assuming are sleeping pills. Um, and he puts it in Mindy's water bottle. Um, it was, and here's uh, a- I thought I read the prescription bottle and I... Fucking was, took a note of it in my head, and now I can't remember what it said. It was Ambien. Ambien, that's right. God damn it. I've never taken Ambien, but I really want to. Um, so, this next scene is something that um, became way more important to me the second time I watched this movie. Uh, because it's very subtle. Uh, Mindy and Alec are hiding in their thing, and Mindy starts telling Alec about a, a another kid's gone missing. And when I first watched this movie, I just thought he was being an asshole in this scene. He's like, oh, I stopped hanging out with him when I was 10. Um, but if you watch, you can really see him holding back his feelings and trying not to choke up and get upset. Like, you can really fucking see it in his face. You can literally see, like, him, like, choking down and swallowing his emotions in his fucking throat. Yep. It is just fucking wonderful. Um, but then he gives Mindy her drugged water. And uh, we see him let the hamster go. And put the food in the closet. And see that he's the one that trapped Greg. The one thing I don't get about this scene is he runs back under the bed. And he grabs a frog mask and put it on. I don't remember him bringing that frog mask with him. I don't remember him putting it under the bed. So I'm not quite sure how that happened. Um... Maybe I'll let, I, it looked like it was a plastic mask. I don't think he can just fold that up and throw it in his back pocket. Maybe he had it underneath his shirt. Maybe he had it in his hoodie pocket. 
Maybe I don't know. Maybe you're closer to Alec than I am. You I mean, weirdo. We got a, we got a good relationship going. This is not. I don't. I do not want to hear about this. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth, you would not do well at frogging. Probably not. Um. So uh, we then also get the funny scene of seeing Alec is the one that removes the cover off Greg's and pisses on him. <laughs> he does. Holy shit. I was like, oh, wow. And that's just delightful. Yeah, and the whole time I'm watching these scenes, I'm like, oh, my God, man. This kid is fucked up. Yeah, and at this point, we don't know why he's doing this. We think he's just doing it because he's an asshole, which makes it really fucked up. You know? we're And we're also going, oh, he's the guy that hit the dude with the bat. Oh, he's the one that's kidnapping the kids or killing the kids. like you start putting together pieces like they mislead you so well oh yeah totally and and i really man it was like as this is progressing i'm like i'm just kind of it's one of those sitting there with your mouth open kind of movies where you're like you're just watching and you're like what the fuck is going on you know because I'm, I'm i'm like okay at first i thought this was going to be like a paranormal activity movie and then we get you know, obviously not, you know, shot and found footage, but still, this is like a paranormal movie, and then we got a serial killer, and now we got some weirdo fucking kid pissing on somebody else. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. It was like watching American Horror Story. I've got to take your word for that one. Um, There's so, so much shit going on that it's hard to fucking goddamn... Oh, uh, yeah, that's... That yeah. it's hard to keep up with, but at least in this movie, it all came together. Yeah. So, as Mindy finds uh, Alex on the roof... He starts to show that he isn't what he seems. Um, and then we also find out he's the one that dropped the cup and hit Jackie's lover. Uh, and then we also find that he's the one that took the phone so that they could get uh, Jackie out of the basement uh, so Mindy could get down to get their hidden stuff. But Mindy hides as he sees the lover in the basement, and then she sees him get hit in the bat uh, by the bat, and then they show us that it's the husband, Greg, who fucking did it. Greg takes a bag out of the cupboard in the basement and puts it in the car. Uh, then leaves in another car with his partner who is waiting in the car. Now we're sitting here going, wait, so this fucked up kid, Alec, isn't the one that hit him in the head with a bat? As soon as the I saw that it? bag, I was like, he's the one kidnapping the kids. I still didn't put that together yet. I will say that. I still didn't have that put together. Um, then we see like, Alex that's on the... a serial killer bag. I know that bag. Don't ask me how. Uh, hey. You know, you did kind of have a bag like that at Days of the Dead. <laughs> uh, no. And somebody did get shot across the street. You can't prove anything. I don't think I want to prove anything. Uh, so no, Alex I know is... where you both live. You don't know where I live, just where yes. Kenneth lives. Oh. Uh, oh, wait, you have my address. <laughs> Shit. Uh, okay, so Alec is cutting up pics on the bed as Mindy gets their shit from the basement. But Jackie shows up and Mindy hides as we see the convo of Jackie claiming that Connor killed the man to Greg. Uh, in hindsight, man, Greg, you're an asshole. You know who killed him. And you were just treating <laughs> yeah. your wife like Shit. You I mean, granted, freak out right now. <laughs> granted, she cheated on you. Um, but God damn, dude, I haven't seen people be this petty since uh, for cheating since fucking uh, Jackie and Kelso and fucking that 70s show. Which was just recently, which was just recently. <laughs> Sorry, man. I did my fucking binge of those 200 episodes years ago. Yeah, if her name's Jackie, she's going to kiss the guy at the cheese counter. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, Speaking of cheese, y'all just keep talking. I'll be right back. Okay, uh, he's going to go get cheese. <laughs> I want some cheese. Um, <laughs> cheese right break. Back. Cheese break on the Kill the Cast podcast. Woo! Um, so as Mindy finds uh, Alec in his mask tying up Connor, it is creepy as fuck. They, that, when Connor, I'm sorry, when Alex looks up with that mask and looks at her, and he's like, don't look at me like that, goosebumps, shivers, that shit was creepy. I fucking loved it. 
Uh, so they get into a fight, and he pushes Mindy, who hits her head. Uh, so he puts Connor in the bathtub uh, and then puts Mindy in the car. But Greg and Jackie get back from burying the body, so he ducks down in the car. He sees him load Connor in the car as Greg tells Jackie to take him to the hospital. But instead of us going straight to Greg searching the house, like we saw previously, Greg gets into his car where Mindy is still passed out and leaves. Of course, Mindy wakes up, sees the bag, and shows the bag that has the missing kid's green soccer jersey, which they talked about earlier in the movie, yep. and the evidence bag with the green Swiss army knives. Yep. Goddamn putting the pieces together. Greg parks in the middle of the woods, and Mindy escapes the car and calls 911 and lets him know that she's in the woods with the kidnapper and that they're going to trick her with the GPS. This is the call that Spitsky was told about. She then finds a camper in the woods with the windows covered in newspaper and hears kids making noises inside. She finds two boys locked in the closet with zip ties. Both kids named Corey. Just kidding. It's just <laughs> and Jesus. Corey. Uh, Charlie Sheen, nowhere to be found. Um... <laughs> Uh, but they are in a closet that are zip-tied shut. Uh, they say that he is digging a hole, but he shows up behind her and goes Black Christmas and puts a bag over her head. Uh, she now, passes here's out. a question that maybe yeah. Kenneth could answer for me, because this is what I thought of. How come... I've never had a bag over my head, so maybe it's not even possible. How come these people just don't bite a hole into the bag? Um, I don't know about biting a hole. But like if 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 something stick a finger my mouth like that, I feel like I could rip the bag with my teeth or, or suck it in and 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 you know something. It's or got something to do with the bag being clear. I think uh, I, I read about something. I read something about it one time about something about the bag. If the bag is clear, for some reason your first impulse is to not go for like the mouth hole or something like that. Your first impulse is to go for your throat. But if the bag is black. Then or, or you can't see through it, you automatically go for the bag on your face. You automatically go to try to get whatever it is off your face. Hmm. Interesting. I always just assume people panic and adrenaline and movie right dumbness. Yeah, well, I mean, I, it didn't take me out of the movie. It just made me think, man, every movie where someone gets a bag over the head, they never, like, try and poke a hole in it or bite a hole in it or anything. Except for Terrifier. Yeah, yep, that's true. Yep, that's true. So anyway... Uh, when he puts her back in the car, he finds a camera and realizes that they've been hiding in his house and there is another person. So at this point in the film, uh, the first two parts now, the, the two narratives are starting to combine. Um, we go back to the scene of Spitsky getting told that uh, Mindy's call and uh, Greg heading back to the house with Mindy. We uh, kind of start getting, this is where we start getting new footage uh, from the previous two viewpoints as one. Greg wants Mindy to stand up. He shoots her, then shoots the wall from her position uh, to where he was standing, cleans the gun, and put it in her hands. Now, I've seen forensic files. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm um, a crime investigator on 4chan. What I'm saying here. <laughs> what? Uh, on Facebook, I play a detective. Um... Is gunpowder residue no longer a thing? It would be if he wasn't a cop. Oh, you think he's just going to cover it all up even though he can't investigate it because it's in he he's the victim? No, he's a cop. So they're not going to come in there and they're not going to dispute his word. You know, he's got video of them being in there for days. You know what I'm saying? He's got that in there. He come across them. I mean, it's a pretty good thing. They had a gun. He come across them, found out that they were in the house. She fucking goddamn didn't want to go to jail or whatever, and so she fucking tried to shoot him. He pulled his gun as a cop because he's got training. He popped her twice in the chest. Case closed. Okay, fair enough. I mean, and he's a cop. Why are they going to dispute his word? Oh, yeah, you have a point. Cops be watching after each other. Mm -hmm. Um, So at this point, we see Alex has an axe, and he finds the body of Mindy. Uh, Greg is lured downstairs by music like we saw before uh, the cut to the second storyline, or second narrative. Um, now, I have no clue why Alec 
had to alert him by making noises when swinging the axe. Despite popular belief, making a noise while you swing an axe does not make it go faster or hit harder. Much like when you put flames on your car, it does not go faster. Much when, like when you lift your truck, your dick does not get bigger. That's actually mm -hmm. only partially true. Uh, grunting or any other expression of, of energy in general while doing an action like that can, in fact, increase. That's why tennis players go, ugh, when they hit the ball. That's why you yell when you're doing martial arts. Yep, you breathe out when you hit somebody in the face, and you breathe in when you're protecting yourself. Okay, well, my joke's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, trying to ruin your joke. But, you know, he shouldn't have because he was trying to sneak up on him. Yeah, fucking. You, you're already swinging an axe. I don't, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the yeah. axe man in New Orleans maybe didn't kill all his victims, but he still was able to sneak up and hit him with the axe a couple of times, you know, before they fucking woke up. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so they get into a fight and Greg hits him in the face with a fire poker. And I've always wanted to hit someone with a fire poker. I just want y'all to know that about me. Um, I have a fire poker. One day I hope to be able to hit somebody with a fire poker. Oh, I can arrange that. You're going to let me hit you with a fire poker? No, I said I could arrange it. I didn't say it was for me. Oh, fuck. Does it involve your back? <laughs> maybe I'm just, gonna, um, I'm just gonna throw somebody in your sliding glass door and be like they broke in hit them <laughs> it's just a dream of mine we're gonna look I at the cuts it... on his face and be like these came from the outside why can't want crash through the glass <laughs> I want it to happen on Christmas morning and I'm building a Christmas fire and the thing's hot and someone breaks in dressed like Santa Claus and I'm just like beating them with a hot Fucking fire poker. Uh, I got a hard on. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Greg gets up and goes and grabs a knife, stabs himself in the shoulder, cleans the handle to plant it on Alex, but Alec has moved and he has got the gun and uh, tells Greg he knows that he took the boys, but Greg's like, bitch, you took the boys and then y'all broke in here to fuck with the lead detective and you're gonna kill me a cop do you even know what's about to fucking come down on top of your fucking head he's intimidating the kid didn't give a shit nope the kid did not and actually even... i want to say how much i appreciated that both scenes where somebody had a gun pointed somebody else there was no long speech there was no hesitation Greg shot Millie or whatever the hell her name was, like, instantly. And this guy was like, I don't give a shit. Bam. Yeah, he literally, Greg's like, wait, you don't understand. When I was a little boy, and then Alec just goes, I don't give a fuck, and shoots him. And I kind of wonder if Greg was about to talk about him being molested as a child. Uh, because uh, if, if you look at a lot of people who uh, get convicted for molesting children, they themselves were molested as children. It's true. Um, and so that little, that little piece in there is very interesting, but Jay, you're right. As soon as he's like, I don't, he's trying to explain it. Alex is just like, I don't give a fuck and shoots. Wonderful. Um, Spitzy, uh, shows up and shoots Alec in the shoulder, like a proper police officer who's disarming someone instead of just straight killing them. It's probably because Alec is white. Um, boom. Shoot him yeah. in the leg. Now we question it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cops... Um, uh, well, as Pitsy comes in, Alex says his name. And that's when the cops find everything. They find the trailer say in the name, woods. Say my name. <laughs> they rescue the boys. Uh, they find the bag in the car at the house with all the evidence. And then Jackie and Connor show back up at the house. What the fuck? Yeah. We then see a flashback from Alex as him and his friend meet Greg on the train tracks as kids and are shown with the knife. Now, here's something I didn't notice until my second watch through. In uh, Alex's back pocket in this scene as a kid, there is a Yoshi Pez dispenser mm -hmm. that he is actually seen eating Pez's from earlier on in the movie. Yeah. As an adult. 
yeah, didn't I, catch that I until my second Yoshi, video. and I was like, hey, Yoshi. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, holy shit. So that's the fucking movie. Uh, now, I guess we're going to blow it some. Um, holy shit, guys. Uh, Kenneth, what was just, like, your favorite part of this movie? What, like, what part just made you go, god damn? When dude just straight shot that chick in the chest, I didn't think she was going to die. I thought she was going to be, like, some kind of survivor or something. Yeah, nope, dead. I was like, I thought that was pretty good. And I like the, uh, you know, pretty much the reveal. You know, the ending reveal, where it's like, okay, this kid was one of the two kids, and how it... It's, it's, it's almost like uh, it's almost like when you're watching a movie and, and all the revelations come together and you're like, you know, you got that signature scene of somebody's face when that when everything clicks, you know, kind of like in, uh, you know, and they got that same shot sequence kind of like in Jaws where they're going on dude's face. You know, it's kind of like that where it's just like, oh, everything just came together. I get it now. Aha. Yeah, this movie puts the puzzle pieces together so fucking well. And at the end. They tell you everything without, like, over-explaining. They don't shove it in your face. Right. I mean, it's just everything just kind of flowed, kind of flowed together. And, and, and the cool thing about it was, is, like, it was done so well. It, it, you know, the twist itself, it was, it was done so well. Like, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see either one of them coming. I didn't see them coming at all. Didn't know what the fuck was going on. There were parts in the movie that were just straight misleading. And and, and so I think I think you said it when you and I were having a conversation or when you first brought this movie up to me that it's like, you know, it sucks that movies like this just kind of fly under the radar without ever getting any kind of recognition. Yeah, because my dad said that to me. My dad was like, I can't believe no one's talked about this movie. Um, Shout like, out to Kevin for the suggestion. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see what else is the writer. The writer really hasn't written anything. Uh, funny enough, he is an actor and, uh, funny enough, he is actually in American Horror Story. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's kind of funny, but I can't wait to see what this guy fucking writes because holy shit. Yeah. This was fucking amazing. Just, oh, uh, like they have great red herrings that are not like super ridiculous Everything in this movie is so logically done and every reveal is like not just out of nowhere. You go, oh, that makes fucking sense. And just the first half of this movie being a paranormal red herring and then the reveal of the first twist in the middle of the goddamn movie and then you still get another twist ending reveal at the end of the movie. And it's just that second, that reveal, the first reveal in the middle of the movie, I would have never have guessed. Literally right. never would have thought that it was going to go that route and that it was going to be that well put together that this kid survived being molested or raped or whatever. Um, and was able to track down the guy that did it, found someone who does frogging, picked the house for her, and go. And you kind of believe all of it. Like, at no point am I like, this is ridiculous. How did yeah, he ever do like this? Yeah, it's not like Ocean's Eleven where it's like everything, including coincidences, has to go right for it to be plausible. It actually makes sense. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. And it also makes you go... I wonder if that original child killer did it or if um, it was Greg. I don't think it was Greg. I think that original guy probably was the one killing the children because they mentioned finding the victim's clothes at his house. I think. No, but he's a he's been a cop this whole time. He planted it the same way we've seen him try and set up all these other people. Do you think? See, the reason I don't is because I think those two kids on the train tracks were his actual first victims and he couldn't quite kill them. He wasn't good enough to do it yet. Like um, a lot of serial killers try to kill someone at first and, and can't do it or fuck up or they, they elevate, they, they molest or rape first. And then later on they move into killing 
it's I would love to know more about this fu- the character of Greg and and to know if did he because I don't think Greg was on that task force back then. I think only Schwitz was because they keep bringing everything to uh, Spitz saying it was his case. It was his case. It was his case. I don't know if it was him, but then again, he did give those kids that that green knife. So maybe. Oh fuck, I Kenneth, what do you was. think? Did he was he the killer and he framed someone? Yeah. Or was he being a copycat? No, I think he framed. I, I mean, think he framed they even the short times they mentioned the guy who was arrested, they talked about him like, you know, claiming it was a false arrest and all that other stuff like that. Like it it feels more like they were saying, yeah, Greg set this guy up forever ago. Even if he wasn't on the case, he's still, you know, having cop knowledge would make it pretty easy to to do something like that. Yeah, see, I think he uh I think he's I think he was he had set that guy whoever was in prison for it. I think he set him up. Well, okay, I I think y'all are convincing me. I maybe I'm looking at too too much of a psychological standpoint from the killer cuz it just makes me go why did he let those two kids live? What maybe happened like, that maybe caused like those two said. kids? You know, maybe he uh, that was the end of his his um you know, remorse. Maybe it went away. Maybe at that point, you know, the the need to do what he needed to do was not overwhelming enough yet. I or mean, maybe it he been just started as a straight up molester and then started killing them later. Yeah, you know, it could have been anything. I mean, it could have been a number of things. I mean, you, I guess it I mean, also comes down the, to out we out don't know. Us, out of the three when, of us, you know, cereals more than anybody else. And I mean, when it really comes down to it, I mean, think about it. There could have been so many different well, factors of why them two kids survived. It comes down to, for me, the biggest piece of information I need to know is at what point during the six children who died do these two kids fit in? Beginning, yeah. middle, end. Because if it's at the end, it literally makes no sense. If it's towards the beginning, it makes sense because he hasn't moved up to killing yet. <laughs> I mean, so, so it could have been a number of things. You know, one of the biggest things that got me about this, though, is those two kids that were locked up in the fucking in the airstream. All right. What gets me about that is the only thing that was holding them doors shut was zip ties. Yeah, but those are police grade zip ties. Bullshit. All right. It doesn't matter. All right. What you do. All right. Inside of an. Have you ever been inside of a, of a little camper like that before? Okay, but keep in mind, these kids are 10 years old. Wait, 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 wait. Just listen. All right, have okay, you ever I, been inside no. a camper like that? Okay, the si- think about the size of the rooms that they're in. All right, at 10 years old, at the size that you are at 10 years old, what you could do if you really wanted to get out bad enough is you plant your back up against the door, and then you put your feet up against the other side of the wall and push. Push it good. Do it good. Yeah, but I'm, I'm with Jerry. Those like kids wouldn't think I, of that. But yeah, also, we don't. They're sense. they're paranoid. They're scared. They could be malnourished at this point. I mean, you're right. There is a lot of factors that are in there, but it don't, it wouldn't take much to fucking goddamn, especially in a camper. Okay, the way campers are built. Wait, but we also don't know if the kids have their hands or feet tied. How like maybe they just didn't even think. I mean, you're right. They could. They, there is a, a way to get out of that. I just don't think those ten year old kids. So my point would is, would have thought about it because not every child was raised in a Mad Max Thunderdome like you. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm just I'm just sitting here thinking about how I, what I was like when I was 10 years old. I'm gonna get a call from Kenneth tomorrow, going, Kenneth, you're a weird yeah, person. Yeah, I just locked Jade in a closet. She's gonna push it until she can break it open. I'm training <laughs> her right now. I mean, and dude, I would be like, that's good parenting. I mean, what it really comes down to, man. I mean. When I was 10 years old, I remember what I was like when I was 10 years old. And I would have figured out how to get out of that motherfucker. One way or the other. Yeah, I but you also out. didn't play soccer. Yeah, so? That was just a, a joke about how Americans don't play soccer because we play football because we're goddamn manly. I didn't play shit. Oh, yeah, me either. I didn't. I played t-ball. I played... That was it. Baseball, T-ball, and soccer. Yeah. 
I watched one time in St. Augustine, I played fucking... Catholic ball. <laughs> oh, man. And now I you watched... break into people's houses and pee on them. I do. I watch Rambo movies and Ninja movies. I watch Godzilla movies. Me too. I would have been great at destroying Tokyo. Yeah, and you would have been great at destroying that fucking flimsy ass door in that RV. Yeah, those I, I've I've been in an RV before. Cabinets in an RV are not made very strong. They're they're like a slightly above particle board. Exactly. Like, that's what I'm saying. Slightly I mean, above like... uh made from IKEA. Yeah, that's the only that's the only thing in this entire movie where I'm just like Okay, if those doors open open up well enough for them to be able to put like part of their face out, and the only thing that's holding those doors shut are fucking zip ties. I mean, damn man, those kids. I mean, if not anything else, if the zip ties didn't break and the door didn't break, the screw that was holding them in would snatch right out of that fucking out of that particle board door. That's yeah. the only thing. I mean, there's so many factors there. I mean, at some point, I mean, at how cheaply those things are made, at some point in time, that kid leaning on the door probably would have pulled that screw out that wall. The kid just accidentally sneezes. Yeah. Fucking breaks it. I mean, damn, I grew up in a fucking shotgun trailer. You know what I'm saying? And and, and it's like, dude, if I fucking goddamn got too excited to play in a video game, my elbow would have went through the sheetrock. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Just Kenneth raging at Ninja Gaiden as a child. Fuck yeah, dude. There was a fucking Nintendo controller shaped hole in my wall. I swear to God. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) He'll just fuck it up. Hell yeah. Uh, Okay. My room was uh, so small growing up, dude, that I had to have my TV and my VCR in the closet. Wait, is it the trailer that, that was on your mom's property that I've seen? The one that dad used to live in at the top of the hill, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that thing was fucking tiny. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm I've saying, man. You know, and 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 a, like and, and no joke, I am not making a joke. This it that it's, I literally fucking slung I, and goddamn, you got to think how old was I when when Nintendo was big? The fucking, I don't know, 8 9. Yeah. And damn, um, I literally slung the fucking with my 8 9 year old little little strength slung the fucking controller and put a controller shaped hole in the wall. Funny I enough, it. while I was playing Ninja Gaiden. I knew it. Called it. I had not heard this story before. And I know Kenneth that well. Ah, feels good. But yeah, okay. So this movie is fucking wonderful. I really hope you did not listen to this without having seen the movie. Cause we spoiled fucking everything. Um, it is highly worth the second watch just to kind of re-put everything back together. Um, this will definitely go, like, in my top, like, twist in movies, top reveals, top... This this movie is more thriller than horror, but it's, it's thriller on the side of horror. Like, it definitely... It's just I've a good always, fucking watch. I think watch it. I've said this before and we've talked about it before, but I've almost always considered thrillers just horror in part you know just basically a subgenre of horror yeah i for the most part do also so sucker dicks if you don't like it i don't know um but yeah does anyone have anything else they want to say about this movie before we wrap it up uh no it was it was fantastic i'm i'm so glad we watched it i was like how are we gonna fill a show with just uh this movie uh and then you were like, hey, I got another movie I want you to watch. And I was like, okay. Yeah, so shout out to my dad, Kevin. Uh, great job recommending this movie to me. And I'm very glad that I, I got these two motherfuckers to watch it. Because holy shit, that, that is in like my top five of 2019 movies. That is so fucking good. And it is one that definitely went under the radar. I never saw anyone talk about this movie. I, I, it like, I don't know how I missed it. Um, but I'm super glad my dad was like, Hey, you need to check this fucking flick out. Um, cause God damn, it was fucking great. Did y'all notice that the kid that played, um, that played the son was also in summer of 84. What? Really? Mm-hmm. Holy shit. He must've grew up. Cause I don't remember him. He was the black haired delinquent. 
That doesn't tell me much. You remember? All right, each all right, each kid in summer of '84 had its own thing. All right, you had the main kid, which was the one that that had the whole theory about the about the guy across the street. Okay, then you had the really big guy with the with the kind of like the fro, the one that, that you know stole his mom's car and his mom was having a real hard time because she was working all the time and shit like that. All right, then you had the skinnier, nerdy looking kid, and then you had the juvenile delinquent whose 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 parents always fought and 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 were or I think his dad was abusive or some shit like that. All right, the fourth kid is actually the son from this movie. Holy shit, he's also Cole from the Babysitter. Mm-hmm. God damn. It took me a minute when I was watching this movie. I was like, I know I recognize that kid from somewhere. And then, it, was... hit, and then it hit me when I was on the shitter after I watched it. Man. Holy shit. That, that is fucking dope. Uh, I gotta say, I, I just fucking love this movie. I probably would have focused more on the actors if I wasn't too busy looking at Helen Hunt's face. <laughs> yeah, oh my you know God, what's funny is I just watched a another thriller with her in it from this year. Um, and I was like, wow, what happened to her? <laughs> like, I don't know. It looks like she got a facelift and didn't allow enough time for it to like heal before she went back to work in this movie. The crazy thing about it is, is you know why that is, is because the last movie that any of us ever thought about her being in was Twister. It's and true. so you go, you go from Twister to this and there's like what, 20, 30 years between those two movies. She's got to have been in something I've seen since then. It can't be Twister. That's I can't remember her in anything else. It's possible, but I don't remember her in anything else. It's just like I remember her in Twister where she was kind of fuckable, and then I remember her, and then I see her in this where she's still kind of fuckable, but it looks like she's got a fucking shitty Snapchat filter on her face. Yeah, it, it's, re- it's really fucking bad. Um, it, and see, the thing about it was it wouldn't be that bad if when you're watching it, like everything else has got that HD clarity and then her face looks kind of fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, she just doesn't have the ability to smile in this movie. That too. Uh, but you wait, see she it was a castaway. God, know. pay it forward. Like, yeah, the, le- the, it took me down to getting to the year 2000 for me to find something that I was like, Oh yeah, I've seen that she was in it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, when did Castaway come out? 2000. And when did fucking uh, Twister come Twister, out? Like 96? 90, 96. All right, so yeah. So four years difference between the two of them, and I have seen Castaway, so there's really not going to be a whole lot of difference in in, in 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 the way she looks between those two movies. I'm just going to remember her from Trancers trilogy, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Twister. Twister will always be stuck in my head. Yeah, that's that, and what was that show that she was in? Um, Twister's terrible, though. Twister's a good movie. Go fuck yourself. What TV show? The Mad About You show? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the other thing I remember her from. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick with Trancers. Check out uh, Kenneth, me, and Alex. We did a Trancers trilogy episode. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. You know, you know what I've always thought about Mad About You, and and damn, y'all may not agree with me if either I've one of y'all have watched the show. Never watched it. To me, it was like the Kmart Seinfeld. Oh, that's not a good. That's not a good statement. Yeah, and I mean, I, I and see, I actually like Seinfeld to a degree. I like Seinfeld, but I don't want to watch Kmart Seinfeld. Yeah, I mean, I liked Seinfeld to a degree. There were some episodes where I was just kind of like, meh. And then, you know, once you realize that the guy, you know, the actual Jerry Seinfeld is, you know, really a jerk. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and this is one of those times where it's not like, you know, because I'm usually pretty good about separating the actor's personal life with their art. But in this type of situation where you see the character of Seinfeld in the show and he's always like this nice, quirky guy. And then you find out in real life he's actually a jerk. You know what I'm saying? It kind of it, it kind of distorts the image of the nice, you know, odd guy that he is in the show because you see That's it fair. all the time. You know what I mean? Like when you see other actors out there doing things like uh, like, you know, people that, you know, that always have like that kind of nice guy image or something like that. And then they do movies and in each movie, they're kind of like a different person. You know what I'm saying? It's really not that hard. Because you can see him being an asshole in one thing and being cool in another thing, you know, kind of like Matthew McConaughey. But, you know, uh, 
you see Seinfeld, and the only thing you really know him from, other than stand up, is that long running ass fucking show and the type of person that he is. And then in real life, you find out that he's a jerk. It kind of, I don't know, it kind of fucking distorts the the image that you have of him from the show. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. I do. That's a weird tangent for us to go on for this show, but sorry, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, getting back to it, Matt, about you, Kmart version of, of Seinfeld. Yeah. Proceed, sorry. Um, <laughs> with that, we're getting out of here, guys. Um, I, I actually don't know what our next show is. It's going to be one of two things. We'll see what happens. Whose um, turn is it to pick? Uh, I Dude, at this point, I don't even know. I've got an idea for a show uh, that Kenneth knows about. I don't want to talk about it publicly on the show until I actually... Okay. I mean, I've, I've got most of what we need for it done, but um, I'll tell you when we get off. Um, and then we got to do a horror coliseum coming up soon. Yeah. I want to um, start a Golden Girls podcast. No. Uh, Y'all have fun with that. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. Um, I wonder if anybody else is doing one. I, I I'm gonna don't look know. right now because I'm curious. Yeah, let's see. Um, so yeah, guys, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, our second episode back. It's wonderful. We're more in the groove here now. Um, and uh, check us out on Facebook and YouTube and uh, and all the normal places you you fucking see it. And uh, we will see you soon as we continue to march forward. Um. Be careful out there with the coronavirus. Uh, if we all get quarantined, we will all get quarantined together. We'll there is a movies. Golden Girls podcast. God Holy shit. damn it. <laughs> Motherfucker. I can't believe, like... It is the only Golden Girls podcast, though, because oh, no. every search result is this spot one podcast. That I believe, because I remember when uh, Alex started the Married with Children podcast, no one was doing that. Yeah, see, that's what I'm kind of trying to take from. Is like, all right, is I'll, there an I, Alf podcast? Let's see, because I mean, it's just like you know, Alex started doing that one, and he fucking blew up because nobody else was doing it. Yeah, yeah, there's one called Alf on Alf. Wow. Well, we'll find something, and we'll start a, a sideshow of of that, and we'll we'll do. Well, I don't know. We'll have to find something. Days of our lives. Let's do that. No. Okay. <laughs> um, I, okay. We're ending the show. It's over. Fuck you. <laughs> Kenneth needs to go to sleep. He is obviously uh, delirious. Imagine what it's um, going to be like when I got cabin fever when I'm quarantined in this motherfucker. Do you know how raw my penis is going to be? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Kenneth's going to call me. Man, I've jacked off 27 times. And I just can't do it anymore. I'm so dehydrated and everybody took the water. <laughs> I'm like, go drink out of your hose. You from Georgia? Yeah, it's straight up. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I've done used up all the tissue to wipe up my shiz. And I can't go by anymore. Yep. Why would you, you why, just go and wash your hands? Hey, ma ma maybe I should Save your sit tissue. in the tub and just skeet in the fucking, in, in the drain. I don't know. So that can really clog don't up. Don't you your have mind. a hot chick living with you? Not living with him. Oh. He just well, he I just hires her. Hires her? Is that what you said? No, that was not what I said. Uh, for sure. <laughs> I got a new that, cat. Well, you got good pussy sitting in the house like a house cat. Yeah, like right right next to me right now. Uh, that's funny. Okay, we're getting out of here, guys. Thank you so much. We will see you next time. Good night, goodbye, we love you. Um go go watch I see you again. Yeah. Make sure you wash your hands. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show. Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, 
Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.